Okay, we're going to finish up chapter three. Um, some information about the periodic table. Who you see on this slide is Dmitry Mendeleev. He was a Russian scientist, uh, very famous for arranging the elements into families based on properties. So for example, sodium and potassium, um, they both explode in water, so they're in the same group. Chlorine and fluorine behave similarly. They are gases that like to react with hydrogen to make acids. So they are also in the same group. Here is what his original table looked like and he put the elements in order by atomic number. It wasn't just random. Um, their properties um, were based on these atomic numbers. Um, and any links that I have in this um, file, you can also watch for yourself in my open class. Okay, but here's his original table. Um, he was so smart that if you see these gaps here towards the bottom, he knew those elements had to exist. They didn't exist at the time that he was putting it together, but they were later found and fit into the spots that he predicted. So pretty smart. Some more um, videos for you to watch. I highly recommend it. I like them. Okay, now let's talk about the groups on the table. Um, the biggest group, um, just a general group, they're metals. We have alkali, alkaline earth, and transitions. So make sure you understand some general properties. Luster is like jewelry. Um, it's a shininess. Malleable is also like jewelry. It's being able to hammer the metals into shapes, like charms. Ductile means to draw them into a wire, like copper wiring. And metals also conduct electricity. Okay, so the first group are called alkaline metals. This is group one. Um, what's common about them is that they are very reactive in water. Alkaline earth metals are the next group over group two, a little bit less reactive. Transitions are a big chunk in the middle. A very common elements like copper. Um, you can see it has luster, but it tarnishes, it's ductile, it's used in plumbing. It's a lot of the elements that you're familiar with. And make sure you understand that the metals are found to the left of the staircase. It's a big group. Non-metals are found to the right of the staircase. The properties vary, and the groups include halogens, noble gases, um, just general non-metals. And these are mostly gases like nitrogen, oxygen, neon. Some are solids like carbon, phosphorus, or sulfur. And there are a few liquids like bromine. Okay, now this is a very odd group. These are called metalloids or semi-metals. They have metal and non-metal characteristics. These are found exactly on the staircase, and you can see the list of them. Um, probably silicon is the one you're most familiar with. Um, so how come that can be found in computer um, things to build computers with like chips and things like that, but it's also in implants. So a lot of weird characteristics, so both metal and non-metal. The noble gases are the last group. Um, things like helium, neon, argon you're pretty familiar with. They are unreactive and they're called noble because they really are in a class by themselves. They don't need to react with anybody, they don't want to, they're very stable and other elements are trying to be like them. Okay, just some other elements, or other facts about elements. Most are found in nature, like gold, silver, platinum. Some are natural liquids, probably mercury you're more familiar with, it used to be in thermometers. And then you've got gallium and cesium, who are very unusual. Um, they will melt in your hand, so just thought I'd throw that in there, and that's what's in the pictures. Again, if you want to check out that link, I highly recommend it, it's pretty cool. Okay, now here's an odd um, word. This is called allotrope. So just check out these two elements. These are elements that are, it's the same element, but in a different form. So check out carbon. You have graphite, which is in your pencils, and yet it's also diamond, and it's also coal. And then how about oxygen? It's in the air that you breathe, but also the ozone layer that protects you from the sun's UV. So allotrope, different forms of the same element. Okay, now you have diatomics. I call these the twins. Um, you can call them honorable sevens, they're in group seven, they make a formation of a seven on the periodic table, you get the point. Um, here they are down here, what you need to know is that they occur as partners, just naturally. Um, and this will be more important to you when you have to start naming things later on. Ions, um, this is something that has a charge. So you have the cation, notice the T in cation, so that's my little hint, these are positively charged, like Na plus one, Mg plus two. Then you have the anion, which is a negative charge. So notice the N in anion. Okay? And anions are usually nonmetals, like O2, O minus 2, S minus 2. And the cations are usually positive.
and are usually metals. Okay, so just a little bit about ions here. Um, if you take water by itself, it doesn't conduct, right? Because we can drink it. Salt is the same thing. Just by itself, it doesn't conduct. When you put the two together, ions are created in water. So like Na plus 1 and Cl negative 1. So those ions will create the current or the movement of charge, which is electricity. Okay, so ions plus and minus. Okay, and we finish with just some fun facts about the elements because I enjoy telling you this. Uh, most common element on Earth is oxygen. You were tested on that in the last chapter. The most common element in the universe would be hydrogen. Uh, you're least likely to encounter francium. There's less than an ounce of it on the Earth at any one time. Um, it comes from the decay of another element, and it's pretty dangerous. And then check out this one. Um, ytterbium, erbium, terbium, and ytterium. Um, where do they all come from? So check out that town. It's Yitterby, Sweden. Not sure if I'm even saying that correctly, but it was just an odd fact.